to the coaches inside. Appreciate Hoop Dirt and Dr. Dish supporting this program, but I want to welcome in my old buddy, Mike Blaine at Badai College. What's up, Mike? How we doing, Richie? Doing great, man. Hey, we've come a long way since, what, back in 2003, working West Point camps together. No air conditioning in the barracks. No, yeah, that's, uh, those are some those are some uh, some interesting summer nights, that's for sure. But <laughs> but some great some great people and some great memories there, that's for certain. Nice to have some air conditioning. But you know, you've got quite the background. You were on staff there at Army West Point. You were at Cornell. You were at Maryland Eastern Shore, James Madison, Hampton, Sydney, Radford. Now the head coach at Madai College, and really admire what you've done. Four years, two conference titles, two NCAA tournament appearances. Man, great success, huh? Yeah, we've been very fortunate. We got a great group of uh, young guys here at Madai. Uh, kids have really bought into to what we're trying to accomplish as a program. Very supportive uh, administration, you know, from our president on down. Uh, really invested in the success of these young men on and off the court. So I'm very, very fortunate. We got a great situation here at Madai. It's awesome, man. And, and one thing that people talk about when they talk about Mike Blaine, they say, man, he does something unusual because offensively when your team is shooting free throws you take your players off the lane lines and you put them back on defense how many coaches do that tell us why yeah it's uh it's something that uh first kind of jumped into my train of thought from working for uh for coach Jim Cruz at, at Army West Point uh coach Cruz obviously uh hall of famer uh one of the best in the game to ever do it and we had done it uh, a lot at Army uh, early in the, in the two years that I worked for Coach Cruz, mostly because we had a lot of size uh, disadvantages. So there wasn't going to be a, a great propensity for us to get an offensive rebound with the guys at, at that point in time. So Coach really uh, invested in a, making sure we had a set defense and guys were playing against uh, five on five and a half court. We're fortunate where, at least relative to Division Three, uh, we've got a little bit more size up front. Uh, but as I've looked at it over the years and, and, and for a multitude of reasons, we kind of made this adjustment uh, over time to, to follow suit with that. And it kind of you know, comes down to a little bit of math and uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, of, of some gamesmanship, some strategy on our part. Um, you know, yeah. First and foremost, yeah, first and foremost, we, we want our guys, we challenge our guys as a team. We want to shoot 75% as a team. And from the free throw line. And we're fortunate this year we had a, a very focused bunch. And I think we finished at 74.5%, but most of the year we were 75% plus. So if you look in that situation, you know, in that case, you're making three out of four. So you're only missing, you know, you've only got one chance out of four to grab a rebound. But then you take into account the fact that you know, the number of two shot fouls you're going to take, there's not, there's not a whole lot of one and ones during, you know, during the game. Most of your shots that you go to the free throw line are two shot fouls. So I don't know the exact number of our breakdown of misses uh, of, of first shot versus second shot, but you know, you, you play the odds, you say it's 50, 50. So now you've got only one shot out of eight that you could even possibly get an offensive rebound on uh, based off of whether it's a dead ball or a live ball. So one chance out of eight for us. Then as a team, you know, that's only 12.5% one out of eight. Then as a team, by our misses in the aggregate, we only rebound about 25% of our total shot. So if you take 12.5 misses, you know, 12.5% of a chance to grab a rebound and cut that in four, we really only got a chance to grab a rebound. We're really only going to secure a rebound 3% of the time of all of our total free throws attempted. So as I've looked at it, you know, if you're only going to grab an offensive rebound 3% of the time, it's not a whole lot of bang for our buck there, especially right. as, you know, we look at it, we play at a very, very fast pace. We ask our forwards, uh, and usually our forwards are obviously, as you see on the foul line, you want your big guys up front. Well, we ask our forwards to, to sprint the floor both ends, so it saves them a trip up and down. Then you've also seen, I think, you know, I just noticed it uh, watching the Villanova-Texas Tech game, uh, some of the emphasis on fouls on the rebounding, uh, you know, fouls on, on shots that are live and how many you know, offensive fouls were called for guys climbing over guys' backs. So we, unfortunately, this year have a tendency to foul a little bit too much as a team. And I know all of our guys, our big guys especially, they want to stay in the game. So, you know, I try to you know, eliminate them from a possible foul situation based on the fact of, you know, we might get an offensive rebound, but there's a better chance that you're going to get a foul on that. And I know our guys don't like sitting down yeah. very much. You know, everybody, everybody loves to play. So, right. Uh, 
Yeah, so as we looked at it, we figured, okay, let's set our defense in the half court. Let's make sure we're, we're preventing our guys from picking up unnecessary fouls when really we're only gonna we're only gonna get a benefit out of it about three percent of the time and so that's to me i'd rather play it safe that 97 percent rest the guys that i gotta gotta make extra trips up and down and save our guys from picking up unnecessary fouls mike blaine the mathematician the analytics guy i see you breaking it all the way down so you're so you're doing it for foul purposes you're doing it because you don't want to uh, risk maybe transition defense and whatnot here's my question though how do the guys like it because you're killing their stats man yeah, our, our forwards, uh, our forwards get a little upset because we do have guys that do try to go to the glass very, very off, you know, uh, you know, very, very hard. Uh, they take a lot of pride in that. We we've done a good job uh, building that, and they they really own that. So uh, originally, the first couple times, it was met with a little bit of resistance. And I won't, I won't tell you that once or twice, you know, if I turn my head for a second, somebody doesn't try to slip in there. But, you know, when they do, oddly enough, it seems like every time we actually put somebody on a foul lane, we're picking up a foul going over somebody's back. So basically we've had enough, it's anecdotal evidence, but we've got enough support to say, hey, you know, now you, now you got that extra foul. Now you got to come sit down next to me. And yeah. So, got the chance to play a little bit longer had you had you had you stayed off the free throw line. so you learned it from the great jim cruz who i played for at evansville as a walk-on and obviously i would imagine at end of game situations late games you would probably want to put them at the free throw line or in the lane to get a rebound if need be yeah when we're in the last minute obviously and especially if you're in a situation where you're chasing the game and you might catch an advantage that way certainly we'll put a guy on there uh you know obviously in that situation you know say you've got a one shot but you're down two so you know you, you need the automatic miss you know we're putting a guy there but what we'll do is we'll practice those specific situations of where we want to be and how we want to miss uh, but otherwise, our guys know that, hey, we're off the line. So whoever's shooting that free throw, we got confidence in you. We know you're going to step up and, and knock them down. And, and as a team, we're going to make our mark from the free throw line. So we don't need to, to uh, try to chase it on the uh, offensive glass there. I appreciate you dropping the knowledge, putting that insight in there. I would imagine some coaches are going to watch this. They're going to try it. If they're watching this and they mention this show to Dr. Dish, hey, it's the best shooting machine in the world. They're going to receive an exclusive discount on one of their products. Mike, appreciate you dropping the insight, man. Great. Thanks for having me, Rich. I really appreciate it. You bet, brother.